another mixture problem, this time dealing with percentages, uh, concentrations instead of prices. Uh, the key to mixture problems, again, and recognizing them, is they'll have a multiplication uh, property going across, something like uh, distance times rate equals time. Uh, but you don't know the weights in order to add the rates at the beginning. So using the chart that I showed you in the other mixture problem video is a good way to organize the information, remind yourself where you can add. You can add amounts, but you can't add the rates until you multiply by the weights. Let's look at this particular problem. Joanne has to change the mix in her card's radiator from its summer mix of 30% antifreeze to a winter mix of 75% antifreeze by draining some of her current coolant mix and adding pure antifreeze. And in mixture problems, when they'll say pure, you can assume that's 100% concentration. Assuming that her cooling system has a total capacity of 4 gallons, how much of her current 30% mix should she drain and replace with pure antifreeze to get her desired 75% concentration? All right, let's do this. The first part is we're going to set up our chart again. We're going to talk about the type of antifreeze and the amount in the final mix. the concentration, and notice that the amount of a given type that I have at a given com concentration is, uh, you can call that total or net antifreeze. All right, so we have what she's starting with. She's starting with 30% antifreeze. She's adding 100% or pure antifreeze. And then she wants a 75% winter mix. And you could call this summer and this winter if you like. All right. Now, one of the things that you also need to make sure you do is I would recommend that you do not do any work in algebra with percents written in percent form. It's a great way to communicate. You may even need to answer the question in percent. Uh, but I recommend changing your percents to either decimals or fractions, depending on the problem, in order to work the problem. So I'm going to write these concentrations here. 0 0.30 is 30%. 100% is 1.00, and 75% is 0 0.75. Now, what we want to talk about is the final mix. She's starting with 4 gallons of summer, but she's going to have to drain a certain amount. So in her final mix, she'll have 4 gallons minus some amount, right? And she's going to replace this, what she drains, with pure antifreeze to end up with a total of four gallons of antifreeze. Now, again, one of the things I mentioned is you can add amounts and you can add net amounts, but you can't add the rates, the concentrations, without knowing the weights over here. And so you can't add down this rate column typically unless you know, I mean, if you want to average these out, that only works if you have an equal amount of each, which we don't know and we probably don't have that in this case. Now, looking at this, four gallons, take away this amount, add it back in with the pure, you'll end up with four gallons back in your radiator, but it's going to have a higher concentration. Now, one of the things I like to make sure I do is treat this. This is an expression talking about how much of the summer mix is left after we drain. So we use the parentheses to remind ourselves we're multiplying the concentration times this whole amount here, not just one or the other terms. 
Now we can multiply our, uh, the amount of uh, antifreeze times its concentration will tell us how much of that overall mixture is antifreeze. Uh, so at this point, we're going to write 4 gallons minus x times 0 0.30. That's how much total net antifreeze is uh, contributed by the remaining summer mix. Then here, we're going to have uh, x gallons times 1.00. So all of that antifreeze coming in counts in the total, 100% of it. And then at the end, 4 gallons times 0.75. Okay, you can tell that's three quarters. So notice that if I've got four gallons of 0 0.75 mix, I'm going to have three gallons worth of pure antifreeze in my four gallon mix. 75% of this four gallons of means multiply if you're speaking here. Now I can add the amount that each of these parts of the mix is contributing. I can add that to get that. The chart helps us set up the equation that we're going to end up solving. Let me rewrite it here now. Uh, you can rewrite it below or elsewhere, but I'm going to write this over here in the column. Uh, we're trying to solve 4 gallons, take away a certain amount, times 0 0.30, plus, and this is just x, and that's going to equal 3 gallons, the net amount here, of antifreeze. All right, so at this point, we're going to use the distributive property, simplify, and solve for the amount that we're going to drain. Then we'll check our work. Using the distributive property, I've got 1.2 gallons minus 0.30x plus x equals 3 gallons. All right, so we're going to solve. We're going to put our, keep our x's on this side, and we'll solve and put the constants, in this case the number of gallons, on the other side. So we're going to subtract 1.2 gallons here, and combining like terms, this is going to be 0 0.70 x and subtracting from here 3 gallons minus 1.2 gallons is 2.8 no 1.8 gallons sorry 1.8 gallons at this point to solve for x we're going to divide by 0 0.70 this is not going to come out a nice even round number, so might as well use our calculator for this. And turning our calculator on, we're going to take 1.8 gallons and divide by 0.7. We're dividing by a number less than 1, so we should get something bigger than 1.8. Oops, I multiplied. I said divide, but I multiplied. Let me change that. Divide by 0 0.7. I get two, about 2.57 is about equal to 2.57, and that's gallons. All right. Now, now that I've found that, I should be able to plug back in and check and make sure my equation balances. So x here, I said, was about 2.57. So if I subtract that from 4, 4 minus my answer, that's about 1.43. 1.43. And then if I multiply across 1.43 times 0.3, that's 0 0.43, 0 0.43 of the uh, gallons of the antifreeze came from my original mix, and then 2.57, 2.57 of pure antifreeze 
adds up to a total of three gallons, and it does. Right? Plus 2.57, that gives me my total of about three gallons. So that's how you check that. Make sure that after you solve equations like this, you plug back in and check, make sure everything works.